Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Um, I, um, okay, so the difference between um, letting die and, and killing someone, like the whole notion of passive euthanasia. Can you... Can you talk about passive euthanasia? I do not use that term. I know. It's an old term. term. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so when, uh, like, when you're talking about... Um, Well, can you just talk about that a little more? Okay, because because exactly. because okay, often a lot of people, people compare the two. So they say, well, we do this every day. Um, we, we remove life support. So for instance, Jocelyn Downing, she uses the example: every day we make decisions to remove life-sustaining treatment, and the person dies soon after. Aren't we just doing the same thing as euthanasia? Well, the answer is no. So let's say I'm on an oxygen. I'm on oxygen. I've got a ventilator going. It's pumping out oxygen into me. I could be unconscious. Maybe I don't know. Whatever the condition is, I'm ventilator dependent and they have decided that I'm not getting better and someone has decided to remove turn off that ventilator by turning off the ventilator did they euthanize me and the answer is no they didn't euthanize me now you may say well wait a second Alex wait a second the person died because we turned off the ventilator well no what did I die of you have to always go back to the question what did I die of I died of my inability to breathe I died a natural death. Now, was it ethical to remove the ventilator? That's a whole other question. We can debate that until the, you know, the, 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 the cows come home. But was it euthanasia? The answer is no. I get these emails all the time from people. They're saying this is a circumstance, da 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 da, da and I'm after, or they call me up and they say my dad's in this condition, etc. And I say to them, well, if they do that, your dad might die, but that would not be euthanasia. It might be unethical in his circumstance, and we can debate whether it's unethical in this circumstance or not. But it, it's certainly not euthanasia. Just because it's unethical doesn't mean it's euthanasia. Right, right. Right? Uh, nonetheless, uh, it's often ethical. I'm not getting better. Uh, I'm not, I, might be, I might actually be dead, and the ventilator is simply keeping the body sort of working a bit, and you're allowing natural death. I might never recover. Is it morally wrong to turn off the ventilator? I'm not talking about the guy in PBS even. Now, the guy in Belgium wasn't even on PBS, but they thought he was. But if I was in persistent vegetative state and they dehydrate me to death, they caused my death because I wasn't dying of another condition. I wasn't dying. Terry Shavo wasn't dying. So food and fluids are a little bit different because they dehydrated her to death because there was no other way to kill her unless you give her a lethal dose. And of course, they don't allow that in Florida, but they allow dehydration. You know, and if you compare the two, if you compare the two, dehydrating somebody who's not dying, like a Terry Shavo, or even Alex Shattenberg. You can dehydrate me in 10 to 14 days. Some people might think that's a good thing to do. <laughs> the fact is, is that uh, you can do it. Yeah. Uh, is that euthanasia? Well, they're doing it for reasons of mercy, I guess. But <laughs> the fact is, is, is you can do But it is killing me if you're intending to kill me. So then, If you're intending to kill me by it, that is definitely morally wrong, and it is euthanasia. Is that a moral issue? Yes, it is. Are all these moral issues? Well, this is certainly a legal moral issue, absolutely. So then, um, uh, another... So it's a religious issue. The answer is no, it's not a religious issue. Yeah. It's a human rights issue. Fact is, to kill somebody, that affects your human rights. It's a human rights issue. Yeah. Um, I have a follow-up question. Um, uh, people will often, often say, even if they accept that uh, distinction between letting die and killing someone, that it might be more merciful to kill them and put them out of their misery? And I suppose the answer is palliative care and pain men. Well, wait a second. They're, see, we have to understand their argument because their argument is actually quite compelling. Because they're talking about, because for instance, so let's say we turn off life support with somebody and then they don't die. So what are you going to do with these people who don't want to die? And they say, this is a wretched situation. Well, it might not be wretched for me. I might be just laying there in bed, not unconscious or not in pain, and I'm just not dying. That doesn't mean you should be killing me. But the fact is they were saying for their family and friends and everybody who are, who are coming to visit every day, we turn off the life support, he didn't die. So what do you do with these people who don't want to die, okay? Well, we'll dehydrate them to death. Okay, well that works, yeah. 10 to 14 days are gone. Uh, I think it's actually far more, how do I say it? The fact is, is that they're talking about cases that they'll say, well, the person isn't dying this way. Uh, isn't it far more compassionate just to legalize euthanasia so we can just give them the injection? Right. Done. But then there is a difference between killing and letting die, isn't there? 
One person didn't die, and the other one died by a lethal dose. Big difference. Uh, there's another argument. So you'll say, well, who's going to pay for it? That's a big, a big argument. Who's going to pay for it? So you have people who are not dying in a bed. And they're saying, well, what's the point? Well, my response is OK. But these are the most vulnerable in your nation. If you're going to start killing off these people, uh, then who's next? Because now you've decided it's OK to kill people. We're just, we're just debating the circumstances. That's all we're doing now. And so today you're going to say, this is the circumstance. Oh, yeah, Parliament says, well, that's nice and safe. Well, that's the circumstance. And tomorrow you get a new Parliament in, and they say, well, that wasn't enough because we still have too many people who are you know, floating around in our system. Well, we'll better expand that a bit. And then the courts get involved. Someone says, well, my aunt's in this condition, but she's not in that condition. Why can't she have it? And that person can. And the judge will say, you're right. This person can have it, but that person can't. That person should have it, too, because we're all equal in the law. The fact is, is once you open the... The, uh, the kettle of fish, they, it's for everybody. Right. It's just a matter of time. Uh, and that's how it works. It's either always wrong to intentionally kill, or really in the end, it's never wrong. Right. Yeah. For someone that's in PBS, and um, so that would be, you would consider them, they'd be brain dead, right? Brain death is different than PBS. You're brain dead, you're brain dead. If you're actually brain dead, then you are legally considered dead. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. If I turn dry off fluids and um, nutrition or moving off of another wouldn't be considered euthanasia then because they're brain dead. If I were actually brain dead, some people think that might be true. But if I were actually brain dead and if you turned off my ventilator, and the, the odds are I'm dead fairly quick. Mm -hmm. Because my body's only doing auto response at this point. If I'm brain dead, there's um yeah. remember the whole it's thing is really yeah, the, the intercoordination, the whole thing of the body. It's not going on anymore from brain, or I'm not brain dead. I might be, my brain stem might be fully alive, but I have upper brain death yeah, going on. But at the same time, our, <laughs> our, uh, now, now, now we're just determining uh, circumstances again. So uh, I believe in natural death. I don't think we have to provide medical treatment for every single person. So if you've determined that my upper brain is dead, and I'm in this medical condition, uh, you don't have to provide medical treatment for them. But would you have to provide but we do have to, fluids? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And when the body begins to shut down, the answer is no. Why? Because you can't put fluids into a body that can't use it. Because now, now supposedly this brain dead person, supposedly, because remember, here's the problem with brain death. There's no uniform definition of brain death. I took a lovely biologist class and learned that. Yeah, see, there you go. I'm not telling you a lie. People say, oh, that's not true, Alex. Don't read about it. There's no uniform definition for brain death. So I'm in this institution, and I'm considered fully alive, and I'm in that institution, I'm considered brain dead. Hmm. Am I actually dead? Well, we don't have to provide medical treatment for them, but we do have to provide care. We are obligated to care for everybody, and we should be obligated to care for everybody. Even take the religious concept completely out of that. Just take it out and look at it. If we do not have the obligation to provide basic care for our fellow brothers and sisters in this world, then I think we're in serious trouble. How do you live in a society together when you don't have to care for the other? You turn in on each other, don't you then? Right? Anybody else have questions? <coughs>